We have come this far by faith. We are kept by the power of God. God is good and faithful. It is our prayer that the seeds planted in your heart through the hearing of the word of God will bring positive change. This is Gifted Church Podcast, introducing Pastor Kwame. Praise be to God. Can I tell you something? The Bible says there were 10 desperate guys who luckily met Jesus. And as always, Jesus is always good like that. And the Bible says Jesus helped all 10 of them. A couple of hours later, the Bible says that only one guy came back to say thank you. Jesus said, that where are the other nine? The point is that we don't want to be among the nine who didn't show up. So on the month of November, on behalf of the hundred listeners on this platform, I want to stand before God and say, Father God, we want to thank you for how far you've brought us. We want to acknowledge the fact that if January has turned things around all the way to November, and on the first day of this month, we want to say thank you, Baba. Thank you, Elohim. Thank you, God. On behalf of everybody that listens to the word of God on daily basis. Father, we want to say thank you for our lives. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our children. Thank you for all that you've done. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, we would have come this far. Father, we are grateful. We salute you, O God. We salute your kindness. We salute your faithfulness. We salute your deity and your Godship. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Child of God, it's always a delight to bring you the word of the living God. The Bible says the flower fades, the leaves wither, but the word abide forever. Praise be to God. Guess what? It's Friday, so I want to say thank God it's Friday. I also want to say that may God bless your weekend, may God favor you, and may God be kind unto you. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of um, uh, dial to the light side and talk about relationship today. So it's going to be a relationship topic I want to be talking about today. And then on Monday, I will declare prophetically over your November. So allow me to share with you a little bit on a casual conversation uh, on relationship and then on monday we will prophesy and declare the goodness of god over our month but anyway happy month happy november to you may god be good unto you amen and amen and shalom 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 praise be to god so let's get to work i want to talk to you about the famous couple samson and delilah praise be to god i'm reading from the book of judges chapter 16 the verse number 15 judges 16 15 praise god the bible says now how can you tell me i love you when you don't share your secrets with me lord of mercy how can you tell me you love me when you don't share your secret with me this was the last verse that spoiled everything for samson this was the verse from here on something was going down delilah was the one speaking here she said how can you tell me you love me when you don't share the secret of your strength with me so i want to talk to you a little bit today a casual conversation so take a seat and let's talk um I want to talk about the weight of your destiny versus the weight of your love life. And those things sometimes can pull you on many sides. So allow me to just talk casually with you on today about relationship tips. I'm going to share maybe five or six tips on relationship. But one of the things that is fascinating is that the life of Samson and Delilah is, is, is pregnant with a lot of relationship messages. I can use their life to teach a whole weekend on a conference on relationship it is so vested with a lot of great stuff in it and so i'm going to um just pick few of them for your consideration today um delilah is not the only girl in samson's life but because she was the one that brought samson down um she kind of stole the show but give me a a, a minute and let me kind of do a quick run through the life of Samson for you so that you can appreciate where I'm coming from. So Samson was born based on a prophetic word. A word came from God to the family and it said don't touch his hair. He's going to be a Nazarene and he's going to have a covenant with God and his strength is going to come from the dreadlocks that he has. And if you touch it, he's going to lose his strength. And so the family did exactly what God said and Samson grew up. And when he grew up, his and God was going to use the strength of Samson to deliver Israel from the Philistines. So God was going to use Samson's strength and Samson's relationship 
the relationship of something was part of his assignment. It was part of his destiny. He wasn't a player or anything like that. God was going to use his relationship to deliver Israel from the Philistines. So it was all part of the plan. All right. So God was going to sacrifice Samson's relationship. Samson was destined not to have a good relationship because his life was purely for God. He wasn't supposed to be a marriage material. He was destined to be in a bad relationship for the deliverance of God's people. All right. So get that straight. So his first, I mean, his first marriage was with a Philistine woman and which is not uh, a good choice to have in the, in the first place to go to another nation to marry. So he went there because it was God's plan. The family were not happy with it, but he went there, married this girl. And then on the wedding day, Samson threw a challenge to the family that I'm going to give you a riddle. If you figure it out, then I will give you. 30 piece of linen. If you don't forget how you give me 30 piece. And the Bible says that the night before he was going to uh, review the riddle, the wife came and cried and cried and cried and something told the wife the riddle and the wife betrayed Samson. That's the first betrayer of his life. Betrayed Samson and told the family and now the family figured out and Samson got upset and left the whole wedding. And the father-in-law unfortunately gave the woman to the best man. So Samson came back later after he had kind of calmed down and then the, the father said, told you didn't like the girl so i gave your girl over and something got upset and the scripture says he took um a very bad decision and burned the farm of some of the philistines so when they got up they happened to realize what has happened and so they realized that it was something's wife and the father-in-law that got something upset to do that so they actually killed something's wife and something's father-in-law that was the first chapter and then something alongside fell in love with a prostitute and then delilah came in but notice that the bible says for something fell in love with delilah and when you fall in love it changes the whole game are you hearing me so something actually fell in love with delilah and the Delilah on many occasions also was also a foreign woman and so uh, um, on many occasions was seeking to find a, the secret of something strength because they had promised her a lot of money if she can only reveal something secret so so w- time after time scripture said Delilah would be kind of pestering something trying to figure it out and something will say something and she will take it over and it did not work out for so many times so this verse that i'm looking at was the last straw that killed everything and so bible says that something couldn't take the nagging anymore it was driving him crazy so he just exposed everything and that was the end of something all right so that gives you the picture now let me begin to talk about relationship tips from this all right are you ready sit down because it it might shock you with the first point the first point is that um god's children draw closer and have deeper relationship with god through bad relationship than through good relationship god's children get closer and deeper with god through bad relationship than good relationship amen god's children draw closer and have deeper relationship with god through bad relationship than good relationship let me if you're writing it down let me say it this way for you that will be easy for you to write it down bad relationship bring god's children into a deeper relationship with god than good relationship are you hearing me now that's right and 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 um it's not a bad news but it's true uh, you can uh, attest and you can know people that if it wasn't for the bad marriages that some people went through, they wouldn't have developed how to hear from God. And it's kind of true because the point is that when you end up with a bad person, and let me start by saying that love, to live and not love is not to live at all. And nobody signs up for a bad relationship it is love that leads us into bad relationship. Nobody says, give me a bad person for me to be with. It is love that kind of trick us into bad relationship. And so nobody signs up for bad relationship. When you fall in love, you kind of fall in love. And sometimes you fall in love and love leads you into a bad relationship. But the point is that bad relationship brings God's people. And so you can tell that a lot of people, for some of you, if it wasn't for your bad husband, you wouldn't have prayed the way you have prayed. For some of you, if it wasn't for your bad wife, you wouldn't have sought God. Because it is obvious when you end up with the bad person when you end up with a wicked person when you end up falling in love with the wrong person if god doesn't come in you will lose your mind 
So the good news is that what the devil meant for evil, God meant it for good. Hallelujah. So a lot of people, to be frank with you, if it wasn't for their bad husband, they wouldn't have been prayerful. If it wasn't for their bad wife, they wouldn't have developed the voice, uh, how to hear the voice of God. So bad relationship bring God's people closer to God more than good relationship. And so the point is that what the devil meant for evil. So I don't know if it's a good news or bad news, but at the end of the day, what the devil meant for evil, God meant it for good. Praise be to God. So you want to thank God for your bad marriage. (laughs) You want to thank God for your crazy wife. You want to thank God for your bad relationship because it is through your bad relationship that you learn to pray in the middle of the night. It is through your bad marriage that you've learned to develop how to hear the voice of God. It is through your bad relationship that is how you've learned to get in so close to God. And so for Christians or for God's children, it is through bad relationship. Now let me get to Samson for, to, to prove it. The entire life of Samson, he prayed only once. And if it wasn't a prayer, it was because he wanted something from God. He wasn't like praying to God. He was thirsty and needed to drink. And the Bible says now he cried and God heard him. But after the after Delilah episode, Bible says Samson sought after God and prayed deeper prayers. So you understand that it took a bad relationship for Samson to be the man of God that he was called to be. Let me move on to point number two. Point number two, bad relationship cannot destroy your God-given destiny. Now, I'm going to get in trouble with this, but I have to dig myself out of it. Bad relationship cannot destroy your God-given destiny. And every pastor will say that it was uh, Delilah that destroyed something destiny. But if you actually have read the Bible, you realize that Delilah couldn't destroy something destiny. And if it wasn't for Delilah, Samson could not have finished his destiny. Because the Bible said the night that Samson died, he killed more people. Samson was born to kill. He killed more enemies the night he died than the entire life he lived. And if it wasn't for Delilah, Samson would not have come to fight. Let me take my time and explain this because this is very critical. Because you know, I know, I'm sure you know people that have died out of bad marriages. You know people that their ministry have been destroyed out of bad marriages. You know some pastors that they have, their lives have been destroyed because of bad marriages. You know that. You know some people that have gone to mental institutions because of bad marriages. But let me tell you this. The first thing is that God will not subject his divine plan to your foolish husband or your foolish wife. Your foolish husband or wife or your wicked husband or wife is not that important for them to thwart God's destiny just because they don't behave right. That makes your partner too important. You understand that? Understand that as the first point. Secondly, most people that end up destroying their lives because of bad marriage, they didn't know that their partner don't control their destiny. Anybody that will take something and drink and get mad and, and, get, and destroy themselves because of their marriage didn't work, they just didn't know that their marriage is not as important as their destiny. Let me slow down and say this. Life, there is life after divorce. There is life after separation. So anybody that destroys their life because of divorce, they just didn't know. They gave too much power to the relationship. Samson, on the other hand, did not allow Delilah to destroy his assignment. So it's a choice you make. Anybody that bad marriage has caused you to lose your mind, you give too much energy and strength and value to that relationship. Anybody that marriage has made you lose your life, you give too much strength to the marriage. Because in in actuality, God has not given that much power to your relationship. So the life, there is life after divorce. There is life after separation. So if you see the way that marriage has taken them to the grave, I'm not saying it's their fault, but I'm saying that it shouldn't have been. So understand that bad relationship cannot destroy your God-given destiny unless you let it. Hallelujah. Point number three, you have to value your destiny 
more than your relationship. That's the part that Samson did not figure out. You have to value your destiny more than your relationship. Do you understand that? I think that's a part that Samson couldn't figure out. So now, let me give you two or three practical things you can take home. And from here, I have to give a disclaimer. This is my little humble opinion. I can't put a validation that this that says the Lord. It's like Paul saying, I speak as a man. This is just my simple understanding. Number one, if you fall in love with somebody that you love the person more than they love you, left to me alone, don't tell them everything about yourself. It's just my opinion. It's not a Bible. Because all along, Samson loved Delilah more than Delilah loved Samson. And you know it exists that you can fall in love with somebody who loves you less. So my little advice is that if you fall in love with somebody that you love more than they love you, there are certain things I will wish you wouldn't tell the person. That's just my advice. Advice number two. If you marry somebody who is not a Christian, they will kill you. <laughs> the only reason all the women in Samson's life were ready to betray him was because they were not Jewish girls. If you marry somebody who is not a Christian, they will kill you. They are not your type. They are not your kind. So marry a Christian. Even that one is lottery because not all Christians are Christians. So if you know that marrying a Christian is lottery, then marry a non-Christian is crucifixion. Do you understand that? So if you put your life in the hand, so that's why I said Samson's life was a sacrifice. He was born to marry the wrong person so that God can use that to kill somebody. But the lesson is that if you put your hand, your life in the hand of a non-Christian, they will kill you for money. They will kill you for their own selfish gain. They will enslave your life and make you miserable. So I want to tell you, whatever it is, marry somebody who is a Christian. Not a churchgoer, a Christian. Because if you don't, they will kill you. Delilah was going to destroy something and, and take the money and go spend it with the guy that she likes. So I want you to take these words into heart and be careful with your relationship. Value your destiny more than your relationship. And if you fall in love with somebody who you love strong, you love deeper than the person loves you, be wise and know what to share and what not to share. Hallelujah. But I want you to understand this. Bad relationship cannot destroy your God-given destiny. If you don't want it, it won't destroy. It's a choice people make to destroy their lives after divorce. It's a choice people make to commit suicide after divorce. But God don't need your marriage to succeed to, to do what he has called you to do. If it succeeds, fine. If it doesn't succeed, God can still do what God wants to do. Let me, let me just pray. Father, we want to thank you today. We bless you for who you are. Bless our November. And may all things work together for our good. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>